I would love to have a library. I mean, look at stately homes and they have these huge rooms, these library books. Oh, heaven. Yeah. Because <laughs> I find books restful. It's, I like having books to look at. I actually like clutter. I like having lots of stuff. And like if I had a three bedroom house, then it wouldn't be a problem because I'd have enough room for all the stuff I've got. So I'd be quite happy, but I don't. I've got a one bedroom flat, so uh, I have to be realistic. There is so much stuff and uh, I need to get rid of it. It's sort of like a realization that um, it's not the way it should be. It's started to take over and that's sort of a bit spooky. The fact that I've got all this stuff and I can't get rid. And at the moment it's not too bad, but it's very close to becoming a real, real problem. And I can spend most of my time ignoring it. Because part of the problem is that I don't mind too much. Most of the time. Home Entertainment Centre, I've got a computer, TV and everything. And of course books. Behind the sofa, more books. You can see some of them peeking out there. There's loads there, just stacked up. This is the bedroom. Books, books, the books are four deep in this. There's books of every description in here. This is the clothing rail and behind that, guess what? Books, lots of books. <laughs> I don't know the exact number at the moment. It's over 6,000, definitely. Because they're, they're catalogued on computer. Another thing, I'm, I'm a compulsive list maker and cataloger. So I sort of get get a buzz out of it. Uh, sort of video one is there it is. DVD four eight five. I've actually got this printed out uh, because all my video cassettes are in are in order. So they're all completely indexed. Well it's like the, the walls of the flat are sort of closing in. It's a bit like that thing in in Star Wars where they end up in the trash compactor and the walls are coming in and they're sort of rubbish everywhere. <laughs> if you said get rid of these books, but I couldn't just do it. I can't even have to get rid of something close to you. No. Uh, it's anxiety, it's like sacking a friend. It's almost as though you're betraying them and you 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 would be sad to see them go. So it's it's like being in a horrible position that you wouldn't want to be in. I'm here now. How long am I going to live in this flat? Is it, is it going to get more and more and more? I've been in here 10 years and it's sort of exploded. So I've got to stop. At the very least, I've got to try also to stop accumulating as much. But that is in itself is difficult because I actually like getting the stuff as well. So uh, I like getting it as much as I hate getting rid of it. But obviously is this, this can't go on forever because another 10, 15 years of this and the place will be heaving. <laughs>
and it's just basically everything you see around you. I like the colour and style of these pens and they were ridiculously cheap but rather than just buy the one I needed <laughs> there's probably about possibly a hundred there and to give you another example I went to a car boot sale and I was particularly attracted by this item and I thought it'd make a nice present and I couldn't decide which one to buy and so it's often the case when I can't decide which one to buy I usually buy the lots over the space of probably six months to a year I probably spent about £5,000 on a collection of Mendes players um, that would be in anything from £20 up to £120 individually and there's probably the reason between one and two hundred million just players that I purchased during that time. Yeah. Well, there's three more examples. Those two identical models that I purchased. Identical in every way and untouched since I purchased them. This box tells its own story. I've actually got two in here the same one. And also, in total, I've probably got about 10 of this model, but I would like to think that that's now come to an end. It wasn't the first time they've been caught out on eBay, so hope, but hopefully the last time. What was the other time? Um, when I purchased, um, certainly reason 300 mobile phones over about a year and spent over £10,000. This represents pretty about 50th of the collection, it's like this is a Z7, exactly the same model, and I think I purchased something in the region of about 10 of this particular model. I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't understand why I was buying them all, but it was like I suddenly f felt I couldn't even cope with the volume of things that were coming in, it was just too much. It was nowhere to put them, no space for them, I was having to make space for these things I'd bought, which is ridiculous. Um, and it got to the stage where I was getting panic attacks just to go to the post office to pick up my mail because I was thinking, what's coming today? And suddenly it was like, <laughs> suddenly I felt threatened by all these other items I purchased. It's, it's the flat's like a brick wall built all the way around me, so all the time I'm in the flat, I'm actually surrounded by possessions that trap me because no one can come in. And, then, and until I've actually knocked down that wall and all that, and 90% of the possessions are gone. I won't actually kind of feel free within the flat. I know that to a certain extent I'm, that's only half the battle because probably a third of my possessions will be in my mum's attic. A third of my possessions will be at my girlfriend's and I'll probably only got rid of a third. <laughs> I don't feel I could actually ever get out of this flat on my own. I just think, I mean, I just don't think it's possible. I don't think it's achievable. And if, and if you know, my girlfriend actually moved to America tomorrow, um, I'd probably stop. The actual goal of breaking free from the possessions wouldn't be enough to actually get rid of them. You know, the actual contentment of having them would be enough to actually just keep them. <laughs> if I didn't make an effort to break th through this, I'd probably be still here, 80 years of age, <laughs> um, still trapped by exactly the same possessions. Um, and I died this way. This is quite a scary thought. My mother was always more um, um, worried about things than like myself. So, um, once like, I'd fallen off my bike and you know I'd grazed my knee, you know, and I'd grit you know, and I was bleeding and everything and and um my mother was more worried about the bike, that you know, if the bike was crashed and then she was annoyed because I had like tights on and the tights were ripped. You know, never mind the fact, you know, that I was bleeding and I was hurt and everything. But you know, as long as the bike was alright, but then oh I have to buy you a new pair of tights. 
I mean, I, I still have dreams. I'm mean, like, uh, there, there's one, especially, I mean, like, uh, like a big, like, country house or whatever. But I mean, like, in this big room, it's like a bedroom, but there's just, um, in the middle of it, you know, you know like, big, like, four post bed, and the, the French doors are open, and, you know, the four post bed has got, you know, those, like, curtains and everything. And it, there's a gentle breeze, you know, everything is blowing and whatever. And I said, the room, you know, it's minimalist, it's just a bed, and, you know, that's it in the middle of the room. There's nothing. You know, it's just, you know, white walls and, and you know, wooden floor and, and, um, and I'm enjoying, you know, the, the dream and everything. And then I wake up and I say, oh, shit, you know, what happened? You know, it says it because, I mean, the, the clutter, I mean, I see it, but I don't see it in a way. My problems really started, um, that was back in 1996, where, where I was, Severely depressed. I had like, a nervous breakdown and I had an accident as well, and I couldn't walk. Um, I was on crutches for a long while. So things that just started piling up, you know, whether it was for recycling or, you know, whatever, things just started like, piling up. I mean, eventually I, I walked, you know, but I was still would keep, you know, like newspapers and, you know, the inside of the toilet rolls. I don't know, I don't know why really, because I don't think you can really, you know, do anything with them. Yeah, it's very difficult to to let go of things. It's, you know, the em emotional attachment and the memories attached to the item, and because a lot of it is that, you know, it's that a mausoleum, it's like a time capsule. You know, there's always that, like, you know, the internal like, resistance. You know that that my stuff is like sacred. You know, it might be a lot of rubbish. But, you know, nobody's allowed to touch it, really. Unconsciously, I must, you know, need it somehow, because I think, you know, can't, you know, can't get rid of it. It's very, very, very difficult just to get rid, you know, even of one, one item. And, and, I mean, it happened before, you know, that I managed to sort of, like, get rid of things, but then I've been, like, fishing them out of the bin, you know, when everybody's asleep. You know, I've been going out at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning to fish things out of the bin. Yeah, I was thinking, no, you know, that was a mistake. Got to get it back, sort of rescue it. But I've always, I've realised I've always sort of, like, had a bit of a problem because I always would have to have, like, two of everything. You know, one one that, one that thing that I'd be using, you know, whether it pens at school or whatever, and one spare, you know, somewhere, you know. It's like thinking of the future, in a way, but it's... Um, it's a bit warped, you know, the thinking, I think, you know, when I've, you know, I've been thinking about it. My parents are 82 now, um, and as, you know, I've started to panic because I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm the only child. Um, and what's going to happen to, well, you know, the house and the house is full of stuff and you know, what am I going to do with it? You know, because I don't want it either, but, you know, how am I going to get rid of it? Or, or if I can't get rid of it, you know, what am I going to do with the stuff?
Hello. Hello, John. How are you? Yeah, could we meet tonight? Uh, yeah. Yeah, could you lend me a tenner, John? I, I stayed in a lot when my mum died. I was glad to get out, you know. But now I'm... Um, it's not so bad as it was, you know, the grieving side of it. But um, I still miss me, man, but um, uh, I've got a few things to sort out. Because uh, my mum said, oh, what am I going to do with you? But um, So I miss going around to see her now, so... Um, and uh, fortunately, yeah, I was going to invite her around when I get the place done, but um, not to be, I'm afraid, but... Yeah, so... Um, yeah. I always think it might be um, something lacking. The way I'm like that, you know. Something lacking. I always think there's something lacking about me. I don't know whether social life I... Because when I go straight into a news agent, I'll look, look, I'll look from top to bottom, you know, see what magazines there are. You know, so um, in books, I'll go into WH Smith and I'm always looking for travel books. That's where a lot of my books are travel, you know, maps and... Um, Adventure books, you know. So I always think to myself, why am I like this, you know? You know but, so, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll say, what, oh, what the hell, you know? I'll live on my own, sir. So. I mean, to get the gas, the people who have to come in now and again are the gas company. But they, they haven't bothered me because they know I've been capped, capped it off. I had to get, get them to come in, you know? And then the occasional workmen. But other than that, no one comes in, you know? You know? I bought two women back, they, they stormed out afterwards, you know. Then he said, is this it? I said, I think I'd better go, you know, two women, you know, I met, you know, just years ago. I think I'd better go, and and one, I had one lady come to the door. I was too embarrassed to let her in, you know, but, um, you know, it was embarrassing, you know, but some people look, just look, and, oh, God, you know. They, they, the workmen, they come in, they look round like this, and, do you live in here? You know, and I, I said, yeah, and they, they looked at the window, and they never came back. No, they never came back. Yeah, so I met, I, you know, when my mum died, I mean, just, well, it was painful enough, and I just kept busy uh, trying to clear that out, the place out, and I, I cleared a lot of rubbish out. Unbelievable, you know, but it seems to have mounted up a bit now because I've gone back to work. I very rarely have to look at it, but I, I don't, if I notice I need it to hand, I'll have to keep it, keep it to hand. But, um, but from time to time, I have to, um, Look for things, uh, the records, um, yeah, what have we got here? Maps, yeah, paper, yeah, yeah. I wish I could be more orderly, more. I think it didn't help me move in from a one bedroom flat into a studio flat, you know. So, uh, but I try and keep everything there, which falls down, everything that I need to hand in, in, in the bureau there, you know, people. Paperwork and passport. And, uh, as I say, I'm not really organised, but. Oh. Yeah. Took so grief was bad after a few, especially when they were. After a few weeks, it was the great. I, I had a little cry the other week, you know, about my mum, but um, it's easing off a bit now. But I think, you know, there's certain um, songs that, you know, like triggered, triggered it off again, you know, like classical music, and it would have been nice to get her clothes back, you know. But I think that if they're sold beyond repair, then they have to destroy them. Where my sister spread the ashes, not I don't know. Well, it's up to her, you know.